breaking now, 50 dead, 23 wounded in horrific mass casualty circumstance. The week has only just begun but is off to an exceptionally fatal start. Reports are coming in now that at least 50 people have officially been declared dead and 23 are being rushed to the hospital in an urgent attempt to save their lives. The mass casualty circumstance has rocked the area as other citizens are coming to grips with what happened and awaiting a response from officials on the matter. Many Americans live their lives each day not always thinking about the next or what could happen today that would prevent tomorrow from coming. It's not until calamity or tragedy strikes close to home that people take pause and realize their mortality, question their safety, and for at least a moment, realize what's really important that has not been enough of a priority in their lives. We live in a society that's constantly on the go, but can all be gone a split second. That's what people in one area now are facing at this very moment after 50 people were taken from them at once, and the fate of a couple dozen more still has yet to be determined. The Daily Mail reports. Dozens of people have been killed in a plane crash at an airport in Kathmandu, Nepal on Monday. The flight from Dhaka, Bangladesh, landed on the Tribhuvan International Airport in Nepal, but ended up careening off the runway and crashing, bursting into flames. Nepal Army spokesman, Brigadier General Gokul Banda Uri, said 50 people had died and the fate of the others was unknown. The airplane had carried 67 passengers and four crew members from Bangladesh to Nepal. Airline spokesman Kamral Islam said 33 of the passengers were Nepali, 32 were Bangladeshi, one was Chinese and one from the Maldives. The cause of the crash was not immediately clear but a statement from airport authorities said the plane was out of control as it came into land. Eyewitnesses said the plane, a Canadian-made Bombardier Dash 8Q400 turboprop, crashed as it made a second attempt to land. There might be technical problems on the aircraft. But it has to be probed before making a final statement, Maba Rahman of Bangladesh's Civil Aviation Ministry said. Earlier in the day, a police official said at least 38 people had died, 23 had been injured and 10 were unaccounted for. Several passengers rescued are reported to have later died in hospital. While many may pass this horrific tragedy off as not important to them since it happened in a place that feels like it's a world away, there's something bigger here that needs to be considered. Every day, many of us get in a car, a bus, a train, or an airplane and think nothing of it, as we should, but transportation can kill you in an instant if something horrific were to happen. While it's not healthy or wise to live life focused on the what-ifs, since that's an endless cycle of worry, this reality points out the fact that tragedy can and does strike at any time in a number of ways. Liberals can't ban transportation or deadly natural disasters, they have about as much control over these potentially fatal factors as they do a killer's mental health status that leads them to commit heinous acts of mass murder. This is the second sudden mass casualty in just the last couple of days. A Rwandan provincial governor has confirmed that at least 16 people have been killed instantly and many more have been injured at a Seventh-day Adventist church in Rwandan on Saturday in what is being coined as a freak accident of nature. Governor Rose Mirshianquino said 140 churchgoers were injured and rushed to a nearby hospital, where two are in serious condition. Seventeen of those injured are still at the hospital while all the rest who survived were discharged. The governor added that oddly enough a similar incident occurred on Friday as lightning struck a group of 18 students, leaving one of them dead. And last October, lightning also killed 18 people in different parts of the country. The likelihood of a lightning strike killing so many people at once is extremely low to the point of being unheard of. In the United States, about 50 people are killed by lightning every year, but these deaths usually take place when it's a single individual, large groups and usually in open areas such as farms, rural areas or golf courses. This church incident comes after Rwandan regulators forced the closure of 700 churches for failing to comply with building regulations which might lead to a clue in this particular freak accident. It has been reported that some of the shuttered church did not have a lightning conductor which is a device intended to protect buildings from lightning strikes. Rwanda is known to have fierce lightning storms. Last week, 
Rwandan police arrested six pastors for defying church closures.